Constructing liquefied natural gas or LNG storage tanks is one of the most complex and challenging projects in the energy industry worldwide. LNG itself is a natural gas mixed with ethane that has been cooled to a liquid form for ease of storage or transportation without pressure. LNG is odorless, colorless, non-toxic, and non-corrosive. However, LNG is highly flammable once evaporated into gas prone to freezing or causing asphyxiation. Therefore, storing LNG in large tanks is a safe method. LNG tanks can store LNG at extremely low temperatures up to minus 162 degrees Celsius. Typically, LNG tanks have a double container where the inner container holds LNG and the outer container contains insulation material. Most LNG facilities are built near coastal areas, specifically in port areas. Once the company has conducted surveys and identified suitable locations, the construction company will promptly begin executing plans for various components. Some necessary components include tanks, pipeline systems, and transfer systems. However, some companies utilize their construction teams or hire third parties specialized in the LNG industry. This can maximize work efficiency and compliance with regulations and project execution. One of the most crucial aspects of these LNG storage tanks facilities is the pipeline bridge. This bridge serves to transfer LNG from ships to storage tanks. Additionally, a condenser is needed to condense evaporated LNG back into its liquid form. Heaters are also used to convert LNG from its cryogenic liquid form back into a gaseous state. Among these components, the main and most critical feature in this project is the LNG storage tanks themselves. The construction of LNG tanks is tailored to their location conditions, allowing them to be built above or below ground. Unlike LNG storage tanks or ships, most onshore LNG tanks have single walls. This is due to the extreme cold temperatures associated with LNG storage. Generally, onshore LNG tanks are constructed using materials capable of withstanding extreme temperatures, such as carbon steel, stainless steel, or special cryogenic materials. The first step in constructing LNG storage tanks involves workers installing around 548 pile foundations into the ground for each tank. These piles are driven into the ground to a depth of 30 meters. Besides serving as the building's foundation, these piles also act as earthquake supports. After the piles are installed, the next step is placing a base plate with a thickness of 1.1 meter on top of these piles. To construct this facility, concrete or steel with a 9% nickel mixture is needed to build the base plate, totaling up to 6,850 cubic meters. These raw materials are considered resistant to low temperatures, making them suitable for LNG tank walls. Specifically, the outer layer or shell of the tank is made of concrete and has a diameter of up to 86 meters, with wall thickness ranging from 1 meter at the bottom to 750 millimeters at the top. Building one LNG storage tank requires 9,300 cubic meters of concrete. However, in some other LNG projects, the outer layer of LNG storage tanks utilizes pre-stressed concrete material. Next, the process involves the erection, which is the activity of raising the dome roof of the LNG tank with the assistance of air from the tank base to the final location, which is 40 meters above the base plate. Similar to the tank body, the dome roof is also made of steel and weighs up to 659 metric tons. Meanwhile, the ceiling of the storage tank is made of insulation layers supported by suspension cables and steel shells, then covered again with an outer concrete layer. 
To lift it to the top, workers will use many high-powered blowers to lift the dome roof. These blowers will be installed above the opening to fill air into the tank. The blowers are operated to maintain a constant rate of dome roof ascent. Special aluminum seals will be used to seal the airtight dome between the edge of the steel dome roof and the concrete wall preventing leaks. Once the LNG tank dome roof reaches the peak, the top of the tank must be welded to ensure the roof is structurally connected to the concrete wall. After the minimum required weld length is completed, the next step is the tank is ready for raising, and the subsequent work will proceed inside the tank during the full duration. The raising process takes about 3 to 4 hours, requiring extensive preparations for 395 days with careful planning, detailed engineering, and the placement of various machines for structure installation within the scheduled time frame. Inside these storage tanks, there is a small access air space built to allow personnel to access and conduct checks during the dome roof raising process. In this room, bolts and jacks are used to lock the LNG storage tank roof. Each LNG storage tank typically stands as tall as a 16-story building and has a diameter of up to tens of meters. Regardless of size, tanks are usually equipped with high-quality insulation systems using foam or perlite, which can minimize heat transfer and reduce the likelihood of LNG heating. To monitor the storage tanks 24-7, LNG tanks are connected to advanced monitoring equipment. A day after their establishment, these storage tanks must undergo testing to ensure they meet safety standards before LNG is pumped in. During the integrity test, engineers will start filling the tanks with water. Then they will apply pressure to test for leaks. They will even employ inspectors using small boats inside the LNG tank to visually inspect its inner wall components. Since LNG tanks typically hold 150,000 cubic meters, approximately 944 million liters of water are needed. Once the leaks are ruled out, the water will be drained and the tank is ready for use. Next is the process of transferring LNG from LNG carrier ships to onshore LNG storage tanks. The transfer process uses pipelines that can extend tens to hundreds of meters. With pumps on the LNG carrier, LNG is pumped directly with high pressure for easy transfer to storage tanks. Interestingly, it takes about 12 hours to transfer LNG with the standard load. For filling and withdrawing LNG from onshore storage tanks, the process can be done through the tank's top or dome roof. This process is assisted by using immersion pumps. LNG is always stored in liquid form to prevent evaporation. Therefore, storing LNG in these giant storage tanks is considered the safest option. With the ability of these tanks to maintain a temperature of minus 162 degrees Celsius, LNG is ensured to always be in a safe condition and far from the heat that could cause it to ignite. While LNG is stored in the storage tanks, the pressure generated within the tanks will be continuously monitored to ensure that the rate of increase does not exceed the allowed limit of 120 millimeters per minute. Usually, LNG storage tanks are above ground. However, these tanks can actually be underground. Unfortunately, constructing and maintaining underground LNG storage tanks is considered more difficult and more costly compared to building LPG storage tanks above ground. After LNG is transferred to the storage tanks, the final process is the regasification phase, where LNG is vaporized in the plant. 
This task is considered highly complex and requires a high level of precision. The vaporization process is carried out in an open rack vaporizer at room temperature so that LNG can evaporate quickly. Inside this vaporizer, there are vertical tubes made of aluminum alloy and coated with zinc alloy to prevent corrosion caused by seawater. LNG will flow through it and evaporate while the seawater content inside will flow through different pipes and be discharged into the sea.